this is your common jelly bean LM324N quad op amp and this is my dual op amp that I made from discrete components so for op amps everybody uses op amps they use this magical thing called negative feedback to make analog circuits work problem is a lot of people don't know what's going on inside this little black box so for me to understand um, what's going on I wanted to make one so for me to deserve using an op amp I made one myself what an op amp looks like when you break it down is it looks like a fancy differential amplifier that has a lot of gain and is able to drive a load that's what an op amp is it's a differential amplifier and you use the differential amplifier and you hook up the output back in on itself and use this magical thing called negative feedback and that's what makes the op amp work this is my dual op amp I made from discrete imp components and I wanted to mimic the pinout so you can see here it has three stages you have differential amplifier so you have so you have a differential amplifier here and you have a, a current source in this case a current sink here on the tail of the of the differential amplifier and we're going to tap off from this 1.5k resistor from this 1.5k and we're going to feed that into our common emitter amplifier so basically you have two inputs each input at the base of these transistors these are two NPN transistors and what you see is is you see for signals that wiggle in the same direction you don't see a lot of gain for signals that go in the opposite direction you have a crazy high gain here we tap off that signal and we feed it into this PNP transistor and what this PMP transistor looks like it's a common emitter amplifier so we're we're going to use a signal that gets bigger comes off the collector of it and then once we get that signal we fit it into our push pull so push pull output stage is basically so we can drive a load and it uses some some followers so you have one follower from the positive supply we have another follower that's able to sync current to the negative supply and so what the push pull does is it stiffens your output and this this differential amplifier is pretty weak it's pretty high impedance so we need to stiffen up the output after we put it through some gain we stiffen up that output with the push pull and that there's your op amp so here's our output here's our non-inverting input our inverting input and our output and here at the output we have these two transistors so this is going to be our our PNP here at the bottom and our NPN transistor and our and our push pull and then here behind that is our you can you can basically read it left to right here is our PNP transistor coming from the positive supply and that's just responsible for adding some extra gain in the loop and then we have two transistors that are from our diff amp those give our inputs so one input is connected here the other connected there and then we have our current sync and I basically just built up the same thing a little bit further down and I put a little LED indicator light because you know it doesn't work right if it if it doesn't show you that it's working and the LED the LED indicator makes it makes it work better these pins here are basically just to locate it on the breadboard more than to connect anything up so you might ask me hey Foz does this make a follower yes it does make a follower all right let's see it let's see the follower action here's one channel that's our signal in and then the other channel signal out. We bump this up. Well, we see um, if we go to the other one, it puts a little bit of noise on it, but oh, whatever. Foz, 
does this make an inverting amplifier? Yes, it can make an inverting amplifier. Here we simply have a, a pot hooked up in the inverting amplifier configuration. We can increase the gain on a little bit. There you go, we're getting some clipping. Foz, does this make a non-inverting amplifier? You bet it makes a non-inverting amplifier. Here's our non-inverting amplifier. We have two leads of the potentiometer here on our output. And on our inverting input, we're going to ground. And we have our signal coming in to non-inverting input. So we can adjust again on that too. And we have the same clipping. You do get fuzzy traces. Do I really mind? Eh, whatever. Oh, wow, look at that. So at unity gain, we're getting a lot of problems. That's because this op amp, made of discrete components, is not compensated at all. If I touch this potentiometer, we're introducing a lot of noise into the system. But once we get the gain up a little bit, we have a little bit more stability. So there's there's the non-inverting amplifier. So this was basically just an exercise just to prove that I could do it and that I deserve to use op amps. Here are the traces.